What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Well, it's the last chance for the Clippers to not only redeem themselves from the loss that they had um, the other night against the Timberwolves, but it's their last chance to redeem themselves as in like, you know, find a way to get a win so they can advance in the uh, playoffs. There, it's no secret the the Clippers, you know, they have an opportunity here to advance in the playoffs, but also, you know, um, get a crack at the Phoenix Suns, which will be their definitely their target now. Um, after if after they play the Pelicans, if they can come out with the victory, which I believe they will, um, but it's going to be a tough one, no doubt about it, because when I think about the regular season matchup and everything, I think they played three times in the regular season. The Clippers, uh, I think the Pelicans won twice. The Clippers won once, actually. And actually, the Pelicans beat the Clippers, I think, in November, late November before Paul George went out with the arm injury. Um, they actually beat them with Paul George. So, I mean, it's like it's definitely possible, you know, that they can beat them. So I don't want to discredit anything the Pelicans have done because they've done a good job. They've been, you know, uh, pretty resilient themselves, you know, with their back against the wall. They made a huge trade themselves, just like the Clippers did with Norman Powell and uh, Covington. They made a trade and got C.J. McCollum there. You know what I'm saying? So um, he's in C.J. McCollum. He can he can score. I mean, I'm not a fan of his at all. Never have been. Um, but at the same time, I give him I give him credit. He can score. He can put up 20, 30 points. He can put up. He can have a 30 point game. He can definitely do that. You know, so um, and then, you know, they got Balanchunas in the paint, you know, things like that. So you know, they, they got some people who can put the ball in the basket. And then you still got B.I. Brandon Ingram. You see what I'm saying? So. That game against the Clippers uh, is going to be a lot tougher than what people think. But um, if, you know, if I were the Clippers, I definitely would make sure to focus more on defense than offense. Because a game like this, even though you're hosting the Pelicans because you're playing as the home team, that doesn't mean anything. Because as I said before, the Clippers put themselves in a bad position because you because you didn't win against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now you're in a do or die game as in like, you know, win or go home, almost like a game seven in a, in a seven game series. And you don't want to be in games like this because, you know, anything can happen. It's almost like home court advantage doesn't even really matter in a game seven or a game of this magnitude you see what i'm saying so i just feel like the clippers put themselves in a bad position i thought they would have beat the timberwolves because i mean the clippers were the more of the veteran team and the timberwolves were a very you know young team and um regardless of that the clippers didn't come out with the victory so they got to come out with a victory this time Otherwise, it's go home. I mean, it, it's really that simple. I mean, if the Clippers don't win this game, they got to go home and watch uh, the Pelicans move on to play a Phoenix Suns team who will probably sweep them at, uh, at the very least and um, definitely move on themselves to the next round. So, I mean, um, I'm definitely, you know, hoping that the uh, Clippers can pull this out. And um, I hope they, they, they come out there with the right mindset because sometimes, you know, I've seen the Clippers in a lot of games where, you know, they, they, they come out lackadaisical. They don't come out with that energy that aggression and I, I said before you know when you don't have that when you don't come out with that right mindset I don't care how much skill you have you can have all the skills in the world but the mindset the determination the hunger factor is what drive teams and drive players to be at their best and win games and win big games and big moments and that's what the Clippers are going to have to do hopefully they'll have uh, Luke Kennard back you know um, that uh, in Friday uh, in, in the next game because they're definitely going to need him. They're definitely going to need everything that um, he brings, you know, because as I said before, you know, this team right here is they're well put together. They have a lot of good pieces. But, you know, the one thing I've noticed with them, like, like I said, sometimes like like in last game against the Minnesota Timberwolves, they just didn't, you know, they, they didn't come out the way I, I figured they would, you know, be more more energetic more you know everything and like i said you know it also starts with their current leader on the floor too in paul george you know what i'm saying paul george has to you know come out and be ready to play and you know um be ready to go he can't come out there going three for 15 three for 13 because this time it, it, it can get you beat again you know what I'm saying? And Paul George has got to be better. I, I expect Paul George to come out there and go five for nine, five for 10, 
you know, from the field in the first, second quarter like that. You know what I'm saying? He's going to have to be more efficient because I think New Orleans really has the mindset that they can beat the Clippers. They they own the regular season record, I believe, against them. And like I said, you know, you don't you you, you don't take nobody lightly. You don't underestimate anybody. You never do that. And sometimes I feel like the Clippers kind of play like they underestimate teams sometimes. And uh, hopefully, you know, Ty Lue's pressing the right buttons on the team and, and on the players to get them to understand, hey, this is do or die for us. We put ourselves in this position. This is the position we're in and we can't blame nobody else but ourselves. And that's exactly what he needs to implement to this team because honestly, they failed against the Timberwolves. You know, I just, everybody, I mean, not going to say everybody, but I just personally thought they would have beat the Tim Wolves and wouldn't even be in this position because, like I said, you never know what could happen. And, you know, you don't want somebody like CJ McCollum to go out there and get hot and drop 30, 40 points. And Val Chunas drop 20 plus points and Brandon Ingram have 19 or 20 points. Now you got a problem because where is all that scoring going to come on your end? You don't get consistency from Marcus Morris. Reggie Jackson looked like he's starting to run out of gas to me a little bit. He's been looking like that the last week or two weeks before the season ended to me. Um, he's still playing, you know, fairly well, though, but he still he just looked like he's starting to run out of gas to me. And like I said, Paul George, I can't blame him, but so much because things happen. But, you know, he doesn't really have that much rhythm himself. You know, he's only been back with a few games before the season ended going into a playing tournament. So, you know, a lot can go right for the Clippers, but a lot can go wrong. So I hope the Clippers are fully prepared, you know, for everything that can happen in this game coming up. Because like I said, it's their last chance. I mean, if they find a way to lose this game, I don't really know what would happen with the Clippers in the offseason. I really don't. I don't think Steve Ballmer would be happy. I don't think the organization would be happy. And I think it would just be a, a failure. I mean, Steve Ballmer is a billionaire. I don't think he's paying all this money for a team to go out and to play in tournament. I just don't think he feels that way. Now, I know he knows the team is injured. Everybody's not healthy. But that's really not that's 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 that's, that's not a good enough excuse. This team is good enough to get out of the playing tournament. And I expect them to get out of the playing tournament. I personally expect them to um, dominate this game against the Pelicans. And I can tell you this much. If the game is close in the fourth quarter, I will watch out in this game. Because I want to see if the game is close in the fourth quarter, I want to see Paul George or somebody on the Clippers just kind of sort of take over. Just take over the game. Because you really had the better team. You have the better roster and really you got the best player on the floor in this in this game, which is Paul George. Paul George is better than everybody on the floor when they play in um, in, in in tomorrow's game. So uh, it's no excuses. The Clippers got to go out there and win. And as I said before, too, you got to look at it like this. There's no way there's no possible chance for Kawhi to ever make a return if you don't make it to the next round or the round after that. There's no possible chance for him to come back. You see what I'm saying? So um, the Clippers have to have that in mind. That, that should be their mindset to get their best player back, move on from this playing tournament, knock off this team that's right in front of you, and focus on the Phoenix Suns because it's going to be a tough task. And I can tell you this much. They, if, if they get past the Pelicans, they're going to really have to play their hearts out because, I mean, Phoenix is a lock and loaded team. And I'm not going to lie. They get better and better the more and more I watch them. And the more and more I look at Devin Booker, he is just he, he, he is unstoppable. I mean, I don't know if he took, uh, you know, clips or look at Kobe Bryant clips every day before he wait, you know, when he wakes up and before he goes to sleep and before he plays basketball. But it's really starting to look like he's just starting to dominate like that Mamba mentality Kobe Bryant instilled in him. You see what I'm saying? So you don't want to play around with a team like that. And you definitely want to see if you can get Kawhi Leonard back for a series like that because it's going to be tough. It really is. But, the, you know, the Clippers put themselves in this position and um, they're going to have to go through with it. And, you know, Paul George is going to have to be big. You know, he has to be big against the Pelicans. And if they get past them, he's going to have to be big against the Phoenix Suns. And the only problem now this year, as I said, they don't have Patrick Beverly to guard Devin Booker. So, I mean, you're looking at a situation where Devin Booker is going freestyle, basically. He doesn't have Patrick Beverly irritating him the way he did last year's playoffs where Patrick Beverly shut him down predominantly the whole series 
So the Clippers are in, you know, they could be in some huge trouble if they don't get Kawhi back and they don't find a way to be more consistent on both ends of the floor and be more efficient. You can't have your best player on the floor, Paul George, going three for 20 and all this other stuff. And you're playing teams that's trying to knock you off. And this is and this is the most important time of basketball because this is the most meaningful part or a part of the season in basketball in the playoffs, the play in where every game counts, every loss counts and all, all that. You see what I'm saying? So I expect them to come out and be more aggressive. Uh, I definitely want them to be more aggressive on the defensive end and try to get the Pelicans out the way because the Pelicans can definitely surprise a team. They really can. I mean, I, I, I looking at last night's game against the Spurs, and I know that's the Spurs. It's not really like, you know, the best defensive team in the world, but it is a Greg Popovich team. And Greg Popovich is one of the best coaches ever. So um, he doesn't have much talent on that team. But I mean, they did make the playing tournament just like the Pelicans did. So you got to give them credit. But what I saw last night, their ability to get contributions from different players on the Pelicans, that's that that was that, that was pretty good to see. I mean, I didn't think they really had that type of talent on there. I really didn't see it. I thought, you know, they were all right, a decent team, but you know, they they really got some, you know, some talented players on there who can put the ball in the hoop and, you know, who who aren't afraid of the moment. And I see that in a lot of those players. So the Clippers, if they get a lead, you got to find a way to sustain it. You got to find a way to be aggressive and everybody needs to chip in because this is a game 7. And as I said before, one game eliminations anything goes there's no such thing as a, a home court advantage there's no such thing as none of that it took Kawhi Leonard to hit a, a, a amazing shot a couple seasons ago against the Philadelphia 76ers at home in a game in Toronto in a game seven for them to advance to the next round Kawhi hit probably the most amazing shot ever in NBA history against Joel Embiid and the Sixers and Jimmy Butler to send them home to go to the next round. And they were at home in a game seven. So this is what I'm saying. When you're playing one game eliminations like that, anything can happen. Anything can happen. So I expect the Clippers to go out there and dominate, take care of business. Ty Lu, don't need no funny business on the coaching end. You need to make the adjustments. You need to do what you're supposed to do. Don't sit there and experiment with lineups and all this other crap. No, I don't want to see that. If Ty Lue experiments with a lineup, I expect Jerry West to fire him at the end of the season. I mean, I don't want all this experimenting. Go out there, handle business, do what you're supposed to do. Have the right personnel on the floor. Go out there and dominate. Send the Pelicans back to New Orleans so they can have a Mardi Gras for celebrating that they made that they made it to a playing tournament. And that's where it stops at. And that's what I expect out of the Clippers. That's what I expect out of Ty Lu. That's what I expect out of this team. Because this team has higher expectations than most teams in the league. Even with Paul George on the floor, they got higher expectations. There's a lot of analysts just talking a week ago about, you know, how good this team could be with Paul George and with all that they have, even without Kawhi Leonard. Well, go out there and prove that then. Because last week or a few days ago against the Timberwolves, you laid an egg and showed that you need Kawhi Leonard, even though everybody knows you need Kawhi Leonard anyway. But you showed a, a, a vulnerable weakness that a lot of people didn't see. Because a lot of people picked the Clippers to beat the Timberwolves just because they got more veteran leadership, more veteran players. They know the game. They know situational basketball, or at least you think they should. But they didn't go out there and display that. You had a 10 point lead with seven, eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. You got to find a way to close that. You got to find a way to close that. Tyloo need to make the right adjustments or and or Paul George or somebody needs to step up and find a way to win that. And if and I tell you, if they go out this game and lose against the Pelicans, I don't know what to say about the Clippers after that. I really don't. So hopefully I won't have to think about that. And neither will you. Uh, neither will Clippers Nation. Whoever's listening, you know, shout out to my Cali Take family. Hopefully we don't have to think about that. Hopefully the Clippers go out there and do what they're supposed to do so we can move on. Figure out what we need to do against the Phoenix Suns. Hopefully we get Kawhi Leonard back to help because we definitely gonna need him against that team. And, you know, uh, just kind of go from there. But, hey, that's my take on everything. Leave any comments in the comment section as always. And, hey, Cali out.